Hello folks, yes it's me and we finally completed the ZX Spectrum 48k rebuild on the white PCB. I've just opened some wine. <laughs> Deserve it I believe. Let's just have a quick recap and see how we got where we did. Yes, there's another Howard and he kindly sent me a Spectrum 48k with the rubber keyboard. <laughs> Here we go. But sadly, nothing. And guess what? Bing bong. There was a knock at the door <laughs> and the postie showed up with this. Look at all that. That's just all bits of old solder from the solder sucker. So I've been trying to do this ZX Spectrum repair on a bit of a budget. I didn't want to buy lots of new components so I've been trying to make use of all of the components that are on the existing PCB and effectively transfer them over to the new version 3 PCB. With proper planning and Royal Mail not being on strike, we might have actually done this in a few days. But nah, anyway, the, the great news is, is we're there now. But I mean, just look at the amount of work that had to happen. Each and every individual component was removed from the old PCB with a soldering iron. And then everything was put on the new PCB. And some of the components were quite difficult to remove. The way I went around removing those components was using a soldering iron and a small flat bladed screwdriver. Occasionally you could remove them as a little row, but sometimes you had to remove each and every individual component. Yes, I'm cheap. Yes, I didn't want to spend lots of money. But in the end, uh, there are some differences between the Series 2 PCB and the Series 3 PCB. And you are going to have to buy some components. I'd like to offer a shout out to some people that have been incredibly helpful and very kind in supporting this project. The Lost Retro Tapes, who actually sent me the PCB in the first place, and also a couple of components as well. Uh, he has a website, again, that's well worth checking out with uh, a lot of details on how to repair ZX Spectrums. And then also we've got the Retro Workshop, who very kindly sent me the diagnostic ROM equipment that has been invaluable helping me diagnose where the problems are. If you're an old bugger like me, you're going to end up having to put on two pairs of glasses, I expect. <laughs> I literally had to do that to read the values of some of the capacitors. Um, I ended up putting two sets of glasses on, a times three and a times two set in order to read the numbers and uh, understand what I was doing. But my goodness... So at this point in the project, you catch us about three quarters of the way through the build. So let's get back into the pre-recorded footage and I'll talk you through what I've been up to. So I've ended up having to buy some components because uh, in my frugal ways, I wasn't able to salvage all of the old components from the old board and some of the component values have changed and this kind of stuff. Um, so I've got most of what I need here. However, I am missing, as you can see, a microchip. Great news! <laughs> this is a very kind donation from the Lost Retro Tapes. And I will say, what a fantastic website. What a lovely Twitter account. Thank you so much, at Lost Retro Tapes. He's very kindly found me um, some of the RAM that I need for down here. And also, I was one capacitor missing. So, without further ado, let's get this stuff soldered in place. This is really weird. The camera thinks my hand is a face. Uh... <laughs> Seriously. Camera! Stop that. Get back down there. Hey up folks, first power on. I've got a diagnostic card attached to the back of it. I've checked power supplies, everything looks sensible. I don't have a heat sink on the regulator yet. I know you're gonna moan at me about that. It's just a quick first switch on. So here we go, let's see what happens. It beeped. It's doing things. <laughs> lots of beeping, lots of flashing. We're not there yet, obviously. But the good news is there's something on the screen. So it's sort of working after a fashion. Let's see if we can figure out what the problem is. <laughs> I'm having an oh my god I'm such a muppet moment I've just tested the power supply and the power supply is not quite giving out what it should be and I'm looking at these transistors and I've got them in completely the wrong way around uh, they're, they're 180 degrees inverted um, I've got that one in the right way around 
But I also managed to get this one in the wrong way around as well. It's a little distressing, isn't it? I've just looked at the uh, the pins on TR4. I've got the, the meter on uh, on beep test, if you like, continuity. And guess what? Two pins on TR4 are permanently connected. Uh, now, that could be a shorted coil. Uh, the other two pins on TR4 are okay. That could be a shorted coil, or it could indeed be um, TR4 itself. So... <laughs> Again, let's pop TR4 out and see if uh, that continuity error goes away. So, I have removed TR4. There she is. And TR4, the location for TR4 is here. Let's just see. Yeah, there's no continuity there now. There looks to be a problem with TR4. Let's just have a quick look. Yeah. Yeah, TR4 is cream crackered. Oh, that's such a shame. Yeah, we've got a transistor down. This is a ZTX650. Oh, I've got to order another part. Ah. So I've, I've still yet to make a heatsink for this. So what I've done is I've just made a little paper template, uh, which goes under there like that. And then uh, what I'll do is I'll pop that into the workshop and we'll go ahead and make a an aluminium, an aluminum heatsink. Okay, folks, I've been naughty, so I've borrowed a transistor from a good working PCB, a good working Spectrum PCB, and I fitted that transistor to the power supply section of our reworked PCB. So, let's plug this little beauty in and see what happens. Well, that looks a lot better. That looks like we're now talking to RAM. Uh, and it looks like things are trying to sort of boot there. That's actually quite a good thing. So all that said, let's go ahead and plug in a uh, a diagnostic ROM package or card, uh, which was very kindly sent to me by the Retro Workshop in Milton Keynes. His videos are indeed quite magnificent, so well worth checking out the Retro Workshop on YouTube. Uh, thank you very much for lending me this diagnostic card. It's going to be invaluable. Let's plug it in and see what it tells us about our spectrum. All right, power up. Here we go. Retroleum diagram. Testing lower RAM. Flashy, flashy, screeny stuff. Lower RAM okay. That's good news. Testing upper RAM. Addressing error IC25 and 26 are suspect. So the error that we're getting is quite possibly because I haven't populated these little linkers here. And I have Oki RAM, OKI, and I believe I need to go Oki and then L. So I need to put some jumpers in here and maybe, just maybe, we'll make some more progress. Okay, we're plugging it in, no test card. Let's see what happens. All right, okay, uh, same situation. Uh, okay, that's a bit of a shame. I was sort of hoping it was gonna boot up then, but there we go. We've put the test card back in and let's see what happens. Testing lower RAM, we've got to go through all this lot again. Okay, testing upper RAM. This is getting further along. Okay. Suspect IC18. All right, okay, well it's pointed out IC18. So we need to figure out which one of these is IC18 and see if we've got a replacement. I'm taking out every RAM chip on the new build and plugging it into a socket on the old build. I tested the old build first to make sure everything worked fine and I'm checking each and every RAM chip and so far I've found one RAM chip that's got a problem. Just had a proper eureka moment. <laughs> yes! It's sort of working. Um, put it this way, the RAM is all now 
working. Um, but it looks as though I've got <laughs> another problem. Ah! It looks like the ROM's bad. Uh, let me show you what I've done. So, my Eureka moment. Remember the little links here that I had set to Oki and L? Um, well, I checked this PCB, and underneath the heatsink there are the little links, and this PCB had them set to TI, Texas Instruments, and 3. Um, so, I just... I knew we had good RAM in this thing, good upper RAM in it, because I tested it all on the other PCB. I went ahead and I changed those links over, and we're now passing the RAM tests. That's really good news. The sad news is that once we've done all of that test passing, are you ready for it? Here it comes, here it comes, here it comes. Lower RAM, okay. Upper RAM test. Upper RAM test. Yes, upper RAM test, okay. Happy days. So with the lower RAM and upper RAM tests passed, let's plug it in and see what happens. Ah, oh my goodness, everything's wrong. So just plugging the Retroleum card back in. Tell you what, this video is gonna be a nightmare to edit. Uh, here there is a ROM test somewhere. Where's the ROM? Sinclair ROM number six. So let's hit six on the keyboard. Okay, so it's doing an internal ROM test and it's throwing out a CRC check and seeing what comes back. And sadly, the checksum is coming back bad. That cyclic redundancy check has failed. So it looks like the ROM is bad in this thing as well. Ugh. Okay, so I've just robbed a known good working ROM from the good working spectrum. <clears throat> Let's plug that in. So no heatsink, come on baby. I wanna see Sinclair written on the screen when I plug you in. No, oh damn it. Okay, so, <laughs> it's not the ROM. <laughs> All right, I may be on to some. I may be onto something here. ROM links, number two here, NEC or HIT. And um, over in this corner here, we've got these ROM links. And uh, it looks as though I haven't done that. On this working PCB, we have ROM links in place, both for NEC. And I, me, the Muppet, on my PCB, I have neglected to install those ROM links. Let's get those ROM links installed, and just maybe, just maybe, we might end up with a working spectrum. Oh my goodness, come on. Do do do. Tell you what, if this works, I'm going to open a beer. Right, come on, wish me luck. I tell you what, even if this doesn't work, I'm still going to open a beer. It's freezing upstairs in the shack. Here we go, plugging in. Oh, oh, yes! <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Sinclair Research Limited. We finally, finally have a working spectrum. Oh, <laughs> yes! The elation is over. We finally got a working spectrum. And I think I'm going to call it Frankenstein because really and truly it's just been cobbled together. The heatsink is something that I made in the workshop. Um, I've got capacitors here that should have been axial capacitors. And effectively what I've done is folded legs over and put heat shrink on them. Um, there's uh, quarter watt resistors where eighth watt resistors should be. There's uh, it's just, it's a proper bodge. But my goodness, I am dead happy. I'm really, really happy about this. So let's get this spectrum put back together and then we can start using it. Happy, happy days. So just as a reminder, this is the old spectrum PCB over here, which is barely populated at all most of that has been salvaged all of the old components have been reused to make this new spectrum pcb here 
let's get that spankingly beautiful shiny white PCB in the Spectrum case, in the lower case. Screw it in place, get the keyboard put in place, make sure that nothing fouls up on anything, get all the rest of the screws in the back of it, and then I think we should be ready. Here it is then, folks. <laughs> it's <laughs> the Spectrum. Um connected to a little portable TV, like a little sort of caravan camping type telly, uh, the new Spectrum. And now guess what we can do? We can play Chucky Egg. <laughs> Keyboard works, the Spectrum works, everything works. Oh yeah, look at that masking. How cool is this little monitor though? Oh, there we go. Ah, right. Uh, I think we've got to try and leave the... Where are you going? Where are you going? Both going downhill. Happy days. Oh, yeah. Need to get the egg, don't we? Damn it. No, up, up. Ah, damn it. Ah, come on, why aren't you going up? Ah, there we go. It's quite... Um... There you go. Jump over that. Collect the egg. Jump over that. Uh, uh, we've got a time limit on this. Do I die if I fall too far? I think I do. There we go. Come on. Chucky egg. Uh, bang. Up. Get the egg. Jump over that. Get the last egg. Yes, sir, Bob. Check it out. A massive thank you to all of you that have kindly supported this project, whether it be through sending me bits and pieces, giving me intellectual guidance, or perhaps even just giving us a thumbs up and saying, well done. This has been quite an undertaking. Really enjoyed it. As you can well imagine, we will be turning this into a portable ZX Spectrum in the near future with that lovely, tiny, little battery-powered TV and probably lithium-ion power cells for the Spectrum as well. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. Have a wonderful for Christmas. Massive thumbs up to you guys. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already for more of this utter craziness and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers and beers folks. Bye for now.